Welcome to the basic module of Advanced and Wireless Communications. This course is part of the Colibri project. Uh, we are now going to the wireless networks part one. And my name is Andreas Timgil. I'm with Hamburg University of Technology. If we talk about wireless LAN, we have to think about um, what was the motivation? What we did we want to do when we introduced wireless LAN? And the main idea was to replace Ethernet by a wireless link and not more. We wanted to change our, when people were defining and specifying wireless LAN, the idea was to change as little as possible. If you look at the protocol stack of Ethernet, we see we have, of course, um, the transport network layer being TCP and IP. So TCP being responsible and um, or the transport layer being responsible for the end-to-end -end, um, reliability for congestion and flow control. And we have the network layer, which, was, um, which is responsible for routing and addressing and doing the end-to-end -end routing through the network. In the data link layer, we only talk about the next hop. And here we replace the wired hop by um, a wireless hop. So what we see here is, um, firstly, we have a logical link control, um, which was standardized in eight, IEEE 802.2. And below, we have the medium access control. And that's where we have to start changing, because we have, uh, have to adapt the medium access to control to the wireless medium. And on the physical layer, of course, there's also a change because in the Ethernet we are using fiber coax or twisted pair cables, and in wireless LAN, the intention is to use ISM and radio communication 2.4 or 5 gigahertz with different modulation coding schemes to ensure and enable different uh, speeds and quality of service. So again, uh, from this slide, the main message to take is: if you go from Ethernet to wireless LAN, we only exchange the medium access and the physical layer protocols. If you look into the architecture of a wireless LAN network, then you see that this um, becomes obvious. We have access points, APs here, and the access points talk um, to different wireless stations. So if you look in this um, basic service set, BSS1, um, we have a um, communication between two stations. This always goes to the access point, yeah, this way around. Um, we have a distribution system which, is, uh, which allows us to forward without the network layer from one, part, from one wireless network to another wireless network. And um, this is all reflected also in the different um, addressing schemes which we need in the, in the MAC layer. And we have a portal which is then um, giving the, mm, uh, the link layer, the MAC layer, um, to the higher layers then the router will forward the packets to the internet. If you look in the layers again, um, we have here as, um, two stations which communicate with each other, the, the mobile or the wireless station and the fixed station on the right side. Um, only the stations have the complete protocol stack implemented, application layer, transport and network layer. Also, um, they communicate with the corresponding um, layers on the fixed station. The application might be, for example, HTTP. The fixed station could be the web server. We have the transport layer, which ensures a reliable end-to-end -end connectivity, does flow control and congestion control over a network where it doesn't know what is below. And we have the network layer, which is on the routers and the end systems, which is forwarding the packets according to the IP address in the packet, in the packet header. And then we have the logical link control, and um, we have the access point, and on the wireless link, we have the 802.11 MAC and the 802.11 physical layer, and um, on the MAC access point, the same. If the packet is forwarded to the router, it's, um, it's sent on the next link using the Ethernet protocol, using the 802.3 MAC and the physical layer accordingly. Let's just have an idea about the physical layer. Um, the first physical layer was um, standardized in 1997 already. At that time, there was um, three different um, uh, physical layers um, standardized. One was a direct sequence spread spectrum. Um, that was the only successful part of the standard. It allowed um, one or two megabit using BPSK or QPSK um, modulation schemes, where it's called differential BPSK and differential QPSK. And then we also had um, an infrared communication, which was not successful. You know that the direct IR st um, standard um, took over as, as the standard which is being used. And we, have, um, we had another um, scheme which was also not successful. Unfortunately, this the implementation of the specification was not compatible, so it was vendor-specific to some extent, so devices from different vendors could not talk in 1997. Um, that was only coming with the 802.11b standard, which was um, released in 1999. 
our device at that time were using the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band and using a medium access, and we explained it later, which is called carrier sense multiplayer access. Collision avoidance carrier sense, you should recall, or something be polite before you talk, uh, listen before you talk. If you talk about the direct um, spectrum, uh, sorry, direct sequence spread spectrum, here the idea is that you have the user data on the top here, uh, zero and one, just a binary uh, sequence, and you um, XOR this sequence um, with a chipping sequence which has a higher code rate. And we see that we have an 11 bit Barker code as a um, chipping sequence. And a resulting, you have out of um, one bit, you get 11 codes or 11 chips. And that means you have 11 times the data rate, which you will have to transmit, 11 times the code rate. And, um, but you have a lot of redundancy in this, which means you can, uh, the system is more robust. Now it's, it's time for you to work on the things which I have presented. These are our references, and thank you very much for your attention.